Hello, hello there, guys. Uh, welcome back to the Binkai Suara podcast with me, Roy. Uh, I'm here today with a very, very special guest, Alex Siegel. Hey, man. What's up? What's up? How's it going? Good. It's great to be with you. It's great to be with you, too. Uh, are you in LA right now? I am. How is it over there? It is beautiful. Full summer. <laughs> yeah, I bet... I'll, I'd like to go there somewhere sometimes. <laughs> anyway, you should, uh, you should come. Come on, come on down. <laughs> yeah, very soon. <laughs> anyway, uh, first of all, I'd like to say uh, congratulations on the release of uh, your album, Walk You Home. It's really, really amazing. Uh, and out of all songs that I can't choose my favorite because they're all incredible. They're all amazing. And I just like to listen to them all. So congratulations. Oh, so, uh, yeah, Thank I'm, you. Uh, I'm so excited to talk to you about it. Uh, but first of all, can you uh, tell me a bit? Uh, can you know, tell the listeners about what you uh, uh, what what uh, about what you what you home is all about? What is it all about? Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's about it's about walking yourself home. I think I think it's about certainly when I made it, I, I was connecting to myself like, and uh, it was a very like healing process to create the music and yeah, just getting in touch with my feelings and kind of jotting them down into little songs as I was going um, day by day. And and then after a few months of that, I looked up and I was like, Oh, I have an album. And that was pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, where did you get the inspiration to create this album? Is there any, you know, is there any particular inspir- inspiration for you to decide to make this album in the first place? Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, I'm always creating music at that particular time. There was just a lot going on in my life. Like, like it was sort of leading up to actually getting engaged to my partner I've been with for five years. Um, so sort of some of the songs are about the stuff we were going through and, and overcoming the doubts that you feel about somebody and, kind of how good it feels to take a leap of faith and yeah and um and yeah just the different facets of love uh and yeah and i'm sure you had like such great time uh great time making it but uh out of the 12 tracks in the album if you if you were to choose one uh is there any specific track that really uh, stands out to you in some uh, of how you made it or how that you really enjoyed writing it uh during the process that's a great question ah wow i think willing to change was the song that i made first on the album and when i made it i didn't want to show anybody for for like a while because i felt like i had it was just a feeling like like i'd stumbled into the something new that i was excited about so i didn't really want to like let anyone in on it just yet like <laughs> i like keep it a secret to myself and um yeah so i think i think that one kind of set the tone and um uh yeah did you have some sort of uh inspiration you know, like a musician that drew you into becoming an artist uh when you grew up as a kid oh wow i listened to the band sublime which was very, very popular, like I think in, you know, Southern California where I grew up. And I think from age like 12 to like 13 or 14, it was like a solid two years where I only listened to Sublime. And I remember I I was at a summer camp one time and the counselor, he was like this, he was like, you should check out Modest Mouse. Like, there's other bands besides Sublime. And I was like, no, that there aren't. There aren't <laughs> other bands. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess, yeah, I love Sublime. And then Jimi Hendrix really got me into like playing guitar. Um, and yeah, those are a couple couple of my favorite, early favorites. Do you remember the first song that you ever wrote as a kid? Oh my gosh. The first song I ever wrote. Yeah. Well, it's funny because back then, it was, probably, it was probably like 15 or 16. And it was all like very electronic, like beats. Yeah. 
yeah. that I used to make and I didn't sing back then. So I sang with like a vocoder. I don't know if you've heard like a vocoder, but it sounds like a robot singing yeah, kind of. Yeah yeah. 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 So like I'm trying to think of like the very first one, but like all those early songs were like sad robot ballads, <laughs> like emo robot beats. But <laughs> it's like not too far off from like this music that I'm making right now, I think it's just like, maybe now I'm actually like singing, but yeah. Um, yeah. Just like teenage angst, you know, we've all been there. <laughs> we've all been there. Yeah. Just the, just the, just the, the pain of being 15, the sadness. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but when you write a song, uh, do you just, you know, like want to express uh, your own emotions and feelings uh, just let let them out or is there any specific any underlying message that you want to convey to your fans when you write the song i don't know sometimes it feels like there's a message and sometimes it feels like i'm expressing my own feelings especially on this last album but also sometimes it feels like i'm expressing feelings that aren't necessarily my own or like something that i'm going through at that exact moment yeah. but it's like something that i can like connect to or like tap into to to kind of write about um yeah or just something that just feels feels right to express but um i don't know if i would say i, I have like messages that i'm trying to like get across but maybe feelings yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how do you how do you stay inspired or, or, or motivated to create new songs uh, I just don't do it if I don't feel inspired to do it. Like I don't, I don't like force it, you know, yeah, but yeah. a lot of times, like a lot of times, like in the course of um, like working with other people or like having a session with like another artist that can be really inspiring. Like if they, if we're working on their song or we're just writing something, um, you know, new, that's not like for me, but uh it just gets the juices flowing. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but then, how do you balance out the technical aspects of uh, of the music production with the uh, with the creative side? I must say of your writing of your songwriting. How do you balance them out? Mm. Wow, that's a that's a cool question. I will say this: like sometimes I have a song, and mm. I'm like, I'm gonna record this song. And then I record it. And sometimes I just start making music mm. and then the, the sound of the music like inspires a song, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like I remember one time, like I, I made, I, I just thought like, oh, you know, like you're inside and it's like a rainy day. It's like a rainy afternoon. And like the rain is like falling on your, on your window and you're feeling kind of you know nostalgic and there's a happy sad feeling let me make some music that feels like that yeah. and i just started like making that mm -hmm. and then it, you can kind of like put some vocals on it and then it's like becomes a song or it becomes about something different but like i don't know i think i think it's like that thing about you know waiting around for inspiration versus um I think like the physical act of like, you know, picking up a guitar, like yeah. play, you know, playing a piano, like making a beat or something, the physical act kind of like allows the inspiration. It kind of sets the inspiration free or, or it, it invites it in really. Um, that's tends to be how I, how I operate um, more so than like kind of waiting for like a magical feeling to like come yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, uh, as a creator, as a songwriter, uh, what is it like when you uh, when you hear that your songs, your music, has, has really helped someone in a hard time? You know, like just really helping them persevere when it's so hard to think positively. How, how what is it like uh, for you when you hear about that? I feel like that's the best feeling. Yeah, that just means so much to me. Like any kind of like personal, just hearing you know if like this music like that i make means something to someone and helps them in some way is like very 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 meaningful to me like way more than like any amount of like streams yeah. or like any abstract kind of 
metric. Um, yeah, honestly, just like one person being like, hey, like that song was really cool. Like that's pfft. okay. It was worth it. It, it was, was all it. worth it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, you have to be that person for yourself. Yeah. But like um, when you're when you're making it, it's like it's, yeah. it's like you can't really be thinking about uh, you know how it'll be received because it's like you the 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 listener inside of you has to be like receiving it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I completely yeah. agree with you. Uh yeah. and 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 you know, how has and uh, sorry how have the love and support from from coming from your fans like really help you evolve as an artist during these years mm. ah wow that's an interesting question i mean i went on a tour last year and a lot of people came up and said that they had heard my song headspin which was from 2018 and um i just thought that was there was something about that that was really cool to me like you just you just never know like mm -hmm. it's almost like yeah it's funny like <laughs> i don't even know what i'm trying to say but i just think it's really cool it's like if it, you know if i can make something that i like and if other people like it too that's just really awesome you know yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. Yeah. Okay, is there any particular artist that you'd like to work with in the future wish that you could work with them anyone really anyone yeah whoa that's a cool question um i don't know maybe like lana del rey lana del rey i really She's like great. i love her music like yeah she is really great she's great <laughs> uh what are your hopes and dreams you know for the future you know both personally for yourself and professionally as as, as a musician do you have your hopes and, and dreams i have a lot of hopes and dreams i think at this moment my hopes and dreams i i want to be able to create music that i love for my whole life for myself by myself with other people yeah i want to help other people feel inspired about their own music and and create beautiful things and um i don't want to i don't want to be um weighed down by the fear and the yeah. bs and the like and the just the stuff that like my friend somebody was saying me the other day like music is like like an apple that's like growing on a tree and music like business the commodity of music is like a like a like an like a saran wrapped like apple in a grocery store it's like yeah, a yeah. product it's like but music is like nature like it's it's just so it's like it's too important it's too beautiful and important to like put a tiny box around it's just like yeah so i guess i just i just want to make beautiful things and um and uh and just keep growing as a person i guess that's like and be a good be a good person like and and you know be you yeah, know, yeah. Good with my family and my dog love my dog i want to love my dog more that's my main that's so goal. sweet <laughs> <laughs> well i i love that uh, i love your analogy uh, your friend's analogy of music being compared to an apple i love that i love this it's so true music is nature yeah it is yeah. true do you have any advice uh for you know like for aspiring musicians for the youngsters that who are just trying to uh make it into the uh, music industry or yeah. you know like do you have any advice for them? I think like the industry is changing like day to day, you know, month to month. So your, your, your inner compass, your inner sense of knowing really like your style or like your, your taste is so, I think will take you so far. Like, 
like what sounds good to you not only sounds good but like what feels compelling to you yeah about music um about a song about about the way someone's singing about the way that you sing it's it's not i think the bar is not like making something that sounds amazing objectively is boring and plus everybody can do that like because everybody's got the all the plugins and all the and oh man with ai coming in forget about it like everyone's gonna have perfect blah 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 blah. but it's like it's like the thing that is imperfect like the, the thing that is human about it is even more important and certainly more interesting like to me um and it also just feels good feels good to make music so you keep following that feeling and it'll it'll take you somewhere well yeah. uh <laughs> thank you so much uh that that wraps up our talk today uh it's been such a pleasure chatting with you alex likewise i'd, I'd love to have another conversation with you in the future i hope I yeah hope to do so once again congratulations on the release of walk you home best of luck for everything i really really appreciate you swinging by here to talk thank with you us. and yeah for all our listeners uh just remember our podcast is just one click away so alex thanks so much man for joining us today i really really appreciate it <laughs> again me too thank you Thank you so much. Uh, And with that being said, uh, it's our time to go. So bye-bye, guys. I'll see you later on our next episode. Take care, y'all. And thank you, Alex. Bye, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.